not live yet. Are we on now? <laughs> okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to today's question and answer session on dentistry. Uh, the session has been brought to you by the Adult Services Project, which has been funded by the VTCT. Uh, I am Sav and I am a CLAPA volunteer who will be your host. I'm sure you've seen me on a few other webinars leading up to now. And I'm delighted to be joined with Sandy Popat, who is our guest speaker for tonight. Um, if you do have any questions that you would like to ask, please do via the comments in the box below on Facebook and we will be sure to ask them at the very end of our session. Um, so Sandy, without any further ado, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, thank you very much, Stav. Um, my name is Sandip Popat. I'm a consultant in restorative dentistry. Um, I'm based in Oxford at the Spires Clef Flip and Palette Centre and we are one of um, the 10 centres in the country that are specialist centres and have a full wide multidisciplinary team um, available to us to treat cleft lip and palate patients. So basically, Stav, everyone that I see that comes through my door has a cleft lip and palate, and that's been the case now for the last 10 years, and I've been treating patients with cleft lip and palate for nearly 30 years now, so I've Amazing. got a little bit of experience. Amazing. Great. Well, let's get this kick started. Um, we have only a short time, so let's try and answer as much as we can. Um, let's get straight into it. So, first question. What is dental hygiene and why is it so important? So, dental hygiene is really um, keeping your mouth clean and healthy. And really, your mouth is full of bacteria, but everybody's familiar with the white furry stuff that forms on your teeth and your teeth just feel less uh, squeaky clean when you haven't brushed them and all that can do a lot of harm and what, what we've got to remember if we put cleft lip and palate aside every person uh, on this planet is affected by the effects of plaque being on your teeth and what what really happens is that you can get tooth decay and you can get gum disease so it's really really important to keep your teeth as clean as possible and reduce the amount of plaque that's in your mouth. And really what that means is the bacteria that are within the plaque cause cavities with all the food that you eat and everything. So removal of the plaque is really, really important. And other than tooth decay and gum disease, you can also have acid damaged teeth that isn't from tooth decay. So drinking lots of fizzy drinks, diet drinks, fruit juices, smoothies, all of that can damage your teeth. Now, the other thing that's really important is that once you have your secondary teeth, you don't get any more. So if you don't look after your first set, you're a bit stuck really. Uh, we'll talk about dental implants later on, but I can tell you now that dental implants are no substitute for your natural teeth. And the thing I want to talk about also is that keeping your gums clean and healthy also has um, an impact on your systemic or general health. So there have been links made to gum disease and heart disease and poor gums and cancer and poor gums and dementia and Alzheimer's. So, you know, keeping your teeth and mouth healthy because you've got to remember that, you know, products go from your mouth into your bloodstream and can have really negative effects. And the final thing I'll say about dental and oral health is that keeping your teeth clean and healthy means that as a patient with cleft lip palate, if you have any surgery in and around your mouth, the surgeons will insist that your mouth is healthy, otherwise you're much more susceptible to infections and problems after a surgery. So for example, um, with our children that have bone grafts or our adults that have bone grafts, it's really, really important that their mouth is healthy. One, because it's much easier to do the surgery. And number two, the surgery is much, much more likely to be successful in a mm -hmm. mouth that is healthy and not full of bacteria. So really, really important. It's the foundation for everything that you do. Yeah, you actually, know, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest from my experience, I, I feel like it's made me even more in my adulthood life, more, um, how you would say, I guess, strict with my, my, my tooth hygiene uh, regime and going to the dentist and getting clean. And I think 
because we went through it as, as a child, you know, constantly, almost every six months, I was in that dentist chair getting, um, getting it clean. So, yeah, I think it's really instilled it in me, which is great, really. <laughs> well, certainly within my centre in Oxford, we instill it right from birth. So yeah. even with the toddlers and the mothers and toddlers, we talk about good diet, good hygiene, because mm -hmm. we know that keeping your teeth clean gives you a much, much better surgical outcome. Right, um, so yeah. I agree. All right. Well, on to the next question. Uh, what treatments can you offer to anyone with a cleft that may differ from what a general dentist can offer? So um, essentially, the difference between a general dentist and somebody like me is that I have a lot more experience and training in managing patients with cleft lip and palate. So um, I'm a dentist and the dentist takes it takes five years to train as a dentist and then you do another two years of general training, and then you then go on to another five, six, seven years of specialist training. So I did sort of 13 years or so of specialist training um, to become a consultant in restorative dentistry. And that means that we, we treat the patients that regular dentists would normally not treat. That's not to say they physically can't treat them. There's no law that says they can't treat them. It's not that they're not qualified to treat them but it's the experience. And the really important thing about treating patients with cleft lip and palate is over the last 20 years, we've realized that we need to work as a team. And that team consists not just of a restorative consultant, but you know, a surgeon, a maxillofacial surgeon, a plastic surgeon, speech and language therapy. You know, there's a whole um, specialist nursing, um, clinical psychology. So it's really, really a team effort. And it's that team effort that gives you a really, really good outcome. So essentially the difference between what I can do and what a general dentist can do is I can lead the treatment some of it the dentist can carry out so it's not a case of we will do everything within a specialist center the dentist will still need to look at your mouth you'll still need to see a hygienist for the cleaning or the dentist for the cleaning you'll still need to have regular x-rays and all those sorts of things and we work in a shared cared role so i would write to your dentist and say hello my name's Sandra Popat. i'm looking after so and so could you do, you know, help us to do this? You can do this bit because you don't want to be coming into a hospital the whole time. Yeah. It's not, the parking's a nightmare. It takes much longer to travel yeah. um, and you really want to try and do things locally. So we work together. So anything that's cleft related and in the top jaw, we will certainly give advice. and We would advise you very strongly to be registered with a general dentist. And the other thing I should say is it's really important to go to your general dentist anyway because they will always do an oral cancer check. So they always look for oral cancer and just because you've got cleft lip and palate doesn't mean you can't get mouth cancer. So it's really important to go and see your dentist to look at tooth decay, gum disease, oral cancer, tooth wear, all those things are really important. And when you get to adulthood, out of interest is a question of my own actually, um, how often would you say you should visit the dentist? Once a year, twice a year? So it really depends on the amount of complicated treatment that you've had and mm -hmm. the amount of tooth decay and gum disease experience that you've had personally I think everybody should go to the hygienist every three to six months mm -hmm. and okay. certainly go to see the dentist every one, um, once a year if you've got a you know a good healthy mouth and the dentist says but the dentist should be able to tailor your visits to the amount of um, problems that he sees but there's I appreciate it's not easy to find a dentist at this time in particular because a lot of dentists have left NHS dentistry and that's a big problem nationwide. So mm -hmm. I'd say write to your MPs and um, make a noise about it because that's the thing I hear most often is that we can't register with a dentist, but you really should be going at least once a year and probably twice a year if you've got a cleft lip and palate because you need to be extra sure that you keep your teeth um, in good condition. Yeah, that's great. So, all right, well, on to the next question. Uh, how do people make an appointment to see a restorative dentist on the NHS? And do any private clinics offer pro bono work? Yeah, so I'll answer the second part of the question first. I, I'm not aware of any private clinics that offer um, specialist cleft work um, for nothing. But again, I would recommend very strongly that if, you, if you've got a complicated problem, 
go and see your cleft restorative consultant within your local team. So as I said, there's a specialist cleft centre all around the country. There's about 10 of them. And it's worth travelling to go and see somebody like myself uh, or my colleagues in London or Birmingham or Manchester. And the way you do it, you can either get referred by your dentist or you can get referred by your doctor. Now, my advice would be to get referred by your dentist because when somebody like myself writes a letter to a doctor in all the sort of dental speak, the doctor doesn't really know what to do with it. And you've got to remember that some of your treatment will be done by your general dentist. But the really good thing is that we can oversee that treatment and we can work together. So if your dentist knows who I am, he can write to me and I can write to them and we can, you know, any sort of problems that you have or they have, um, we can work things out together. You know, and there's always a, a solution to the problem. So you get referred by your own dentist, ideally. And um, if that's a real problem, I would get referred by your doctor and explain that there is a specialist centre. And remember that, you know, you can look on the Clapper website for where your local centre is. You can find who your local restorative consultant is. Um, you can always look on the websites to find out, you know, in your region, where is the cleft centre. If you were to put cleft um, specialist centre, or clapper, you'll find out where to find us and how to get referred. And the other thing I'd say is a lot of patients, not just cleft patients, are very nervous about seeing a dentist. Um, if you take my wife, for example, she's married to me, but she doesn't like going to see a dentist uh, because she's nervous. But the thing is, you've got to make the effort because if you leave things too late, things only get worse. <laughs> so seeing, catching the problem early is much easier to solve and actually waiting and waiting. And the beauty of coming to a cleft specialist centre is you don't have to see us independently. You can talk to a clinical psychologist. Even if you're scared of coming into the dental room, we can arrange for you to meet the psychologist or even see me outside of the dental room and we can talk about what your fears are. We can help you work it out and then you can um, take treatment at your own pace. So it's very, very, we're very cleft focused. Okay, great. And I mean, this is going to refer on to the, the last question, really, but will an adult have to pay for their treatment? For example, I guess if you're having whitening done, then yes, you, you would have to pay for that, right? So the treatment within a hospital service is generally um, free. So okay. anything that gets you dentally fit should be free. And if whitening forms part of your um, treatment package, um, it may be covered, but that, that's a sort of a difficult question to answer. Dental implants, for example, if they form far, part of your treatment, then you wouldn't be charged okay. in most cleft centres. Luckily, cleft patients are funded for complex treatments. Do you recommend teeth whitening for, for those with a cleft? It, so it put it tooth, whitening, tooth whitening done... Um, under the care of a specialist or a dentist is not harmful. If you buy the kits online, then they can be problematic. Um, there are new guidelines in, in Europe and the UK now where you can only use a certain amount of um, tooth whitening um, concentrations and that needs to be done carefully. But as I say, if you're thinking of getting something complicated done or something that's expensive, get a referral to your restorative consultant first and he will direct you. Because it may be that there's other things going on and just because your teeth may look discolored, you can bleach them to as much as you like, spend loads of money and still not end up with the result that you want. So it's better to go and see a specialist first. Agreed. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. And can I seek further advice and support if I am unsure about cleft-related procedures? Yeah, so... As I keep saying, it's all about seeing a specialist cleft team. We at the Spires Cleft Team, we have a clinical psychologist and the clinical psychologist is really somebody that you can talk to that's non-threatening, or well, none of us are threatening, but you know, you just may feel easier to be able to talk to them and they can help you work out what the issues are. Getting a second opinion is always a good idea. I always say to my adult um, cleft patients that before you go off and have 
a mouthful of veneers or before you have your teeth taken out and have implants put in, come and talk to us because there might be things that are not appropriate. So if, for example, you see the magazines these days and everybody talks about teeth in a day and taking all your teeth out and putting implants in yeah. and dental practices are very good now at loaning you money to, you know, if you haven't got £25,000, you can pay it. And, uh, it all goes to Turkey. <laughs> yeah, or go to, oh, absolutely right. Or go to, you know, health tourism and go and visit a foreign country. Please don't do that. You're very, very lucky in the UK that you have got these specialist centres. Come and talk to us first. I have seen so many sad stories where patients have tried to improve things and gone and paid loads of money. And then actually it ends up being worse. And, you know, having complicated dentistry done, whether you've got a cleft or not, every bit of dentistry that we do will fail. If you imagine your mouth is working all the time 24 seven and you've only, you have the same molar teeth that you had when you were six, when you're 86. So they've got to last a long time. And the more you do to something, the quicker it will fail. So my advice is the less complex dentistry that you have done and the less dentistry you have done, the longer your teeth will last. And that might allow me to talk about dental implants. So dental implants are not straightforward. And patients with a cleft lip and palate, so you can either have a unilateral cleft, which is on one side, or a bilateral cleft, which is on two sides. And um, the audience here will realize that um, you'll remember having bone taken from your hip and put into your jaw to try and knit your jaws together. Mm -hmm. And it's very, it's a very successful operation in knitting your jaws together. But sometimes there isn't enough volume of bone or good quality of bone to put the dental implants into. So sometimes they can be more problematic. So really having that sort of treatment done needs to be done. It needs to be done by somebody that really knows about cleft lip and palate. And actually um, the other complicating factor is most of you will realize that sometimes you have little holes in your palate um, after the surgery, even after the surgery that you had as when you were children. And that, that we call a fistula, and that little hole can be a source of infection. So sometimes it's really difficult to close those fistulae. And if it's really difficult to close those fistulae, it's really difficult to put implants in sometimes. So don't sort of think that, oh, well, I'll let my teeth go to pot. Um, I'll go for implants, because implants are very second best compared to your your natural teeth. Agreed, and I mean, I, I guess it depends on the procedures that you have, but how long does a procedure take on a cleft patient? So procedures can take, um, if you've got complicated procedures, what will happen is you'll come to the dentist, um, you'll come to the specialist center, we'll have a look at you, we'll talk to you, we'll work with, you, with the clinical psychologist, we'll take the appropriate x-rays and we'll take the appropriate molds, and that will be your, consultation appointment so that's usually one appointment and at the end of that or at your second appointment we'll make a plan of treatment so we'll plan exactly what needs doing so the real reasons why patients um, come to see us as restorative consultants is usually they don't like the way they their teeth look mm -hmm. they've had orthodontics and they haven't worn a retainer and it's all gone pear-shaped again and all the teeth are crooked the other reason they come to see us is they've got fluids coming through their nose um, or they don't like their lip scar or their nose scar. Um, they come to see us if they've got issues with talking and being understood or getting tired when they talk because they've got air coming through their nose. So really there's appearance and function related issues and sometimes there's the mixture. And the other key group of patients that we see, certainly in Oxford, and I know um, because I look after all the sort of restorative consultants we get together and talk about um, how we can offer better care. Really, we see a lot of adult patients that had treatment years ago and it's been fine for 20, 30, 40 years and then it's all falling apart. Mm. And that's when it can become really complicated. So come and see us. We can talk you through what the options are um, and um, it can take months or years for treatment and some treatments can be much, much quicker. Yeah? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Um, I'm only in my 20s now, but, you know, I do I do really hope that all of the work I've had done, luckily, I, it, it's done very well for me. So yeah. I, I speak very highly of dentists, and um, even though I do still get a little bit scared, I, I still go. 
<laughs> I still go. I'm very happy anyway with mine. Um, but I think you've kind of answered this next question, but I can uh, ask you it anyway. So what follow-up care will I receive from a restorative dentist if I decide to go ahead with the procedure? So the, the beauty of having treatment with us, as I explained, is um, we share the care between us and your general dentist. So we will see you. Um, we will recommend treatment. Um, some of it or all of it will be done within the hospital. So for example, at Oxford, we would do the majority of it. But if there's some basic dental disease like holes in your teeth and gum disease, and because you haven't been for 10 years or 20 years, you know, there may be some basic dental work to be done. And that sort of work would be done by your dentist. And anything that's around your cleft and the bit that you're most nervous about, we would do more locally. But as I keep saying, um, and Stav, as I was saying, as we were talking earlier, the most important thing is home care. Unless you're seeing a hygienist or a dentist every day, brushing your teeth twice a day, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of an electric toothbrush with a two minute timer. I think it's really important that we use the little brushes that go in between the teeth, interdental brushes. I think it's really important to remember that if your gums bleed, you need to brush them more, you need to poke the brushes in more, okay? And if you're doing everything right and they're still bleeding, get referred in to see a specialist, get referred into your cleft centre and say, these are the problems I'm having. Okay, and a follow-up question would be, will I have to take any time off to visit any follow-up care appointments? You would need to take time off. And um, because the cleft centres are in certain hospitals, sometimes you may be travelling one or two hours to go and see. You may not have one in every town and city. Mm -hmm. So you may end up going, you know, travelling to see one. So at the Spires Cleft Centre, we I have patients coming from the Isle of Wight. I have patients coming to Oxford from Salisbury, Newbury. You know, so it's a really, really big catchment area. But if you're traveling a long, long distance, we will try and work with other specialists or clinicians that are more local to you if, if they're able to do it. But I have to be honest, it's much, much harder now with the NHS as it is that you can't have everything all the time. And one of the compromises is that you may have to travel a bit further, mm -hmm. and, you know, battle with the parking and all that sort of stuff to go and see somebody that's specialist. But the beauty of it is it doesn't cost you anything and you'll get an itemized treatment plan of what we recommend that you do. And I think that, you know, the key message is if you go to your regular dentist and you don't feel comfortable, get referred in, get a second opinion, because it's better to do it before rather than spending all that money and getting the treatment done and it fails. The yeah. other thing, Stav, I think it's important to remember is there will be a lot of patients on the call that have dentures and sort of obturators, which are, dentures that actually allow you to speak properly, mm -hmm. fill the palate so that you don't have leakage through your nose, all those sorts of things your general dentist wouldn't really be familiar with doing. And that's a whole area of dentistry, you know, improving your speech, um, reducing the amount of liquid coming through your nose or down your, you know, that's those sorts of things can be really embarrassing. Um, talking on the phone, you know, improving how you talk you know those are all things that we work with our speech and language therapists with and I would make the appliance but they're the experts in talking and speaking and they you know they would work with us so there's a whole gambit basically if you're not happy come and see us and then you know we work with surgeons we work with speech and language we work with the specialists psychologists nurses everybody so that's really what 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 we should be looking at yeah, and really, you know, you don't have much to lose by, by going in and asking for a second opinion, particularly if it's free, and then why not? You know, I know that it's a lot easier said than done, yeah. um, getting through the, the NHS yeah. <laughs> at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Um, personally, I can, I can tell you that, but, you know, you will get there and it will be worth it in, in the long run. Um, in fact, the next question uh, is something I asked you just before the call, um, but I it's about dentistry so let's, let's have a look do I need to tell a regular dentist not trained in cleft orthodontics about my concerns before they look into my mouth now I always do yeah. I, I think I've always had that in me to tell them because I've noticed from a young age of going to both um, a cleft dentist but also a non-cleft um, 
informed dentist that they often always say the same thing that I've got two teeth missing and you know you can hear them talk about your, your teeth mm. whilst they're looking in your mouth so the first thing I say before they start is look you know I was born with a bilateral cleft lip and palate that's why I might have some teeth missing um and then they, they kind of at least can acknowledge that before going forward and if you say you're a bit nervous they also take that into account yeah I think that's really, really important. I think it's really important to tell the dentist right at the beginning that, you know, I've had lots of treatment for a cleft lip and palate. Sometimes they're not familiar at looking at the palate and they may think it's unusual. They won't really understand why there are holes in your palate. Mm -hmm. They won't understand sometimes where you've had your bone graft and it looks a bit different or the scar tissue. Because if you tell them in advance that you've had this treatment and, you know, even if you took a little printout of where you had your treatment, who did your treatment, what sort of treatment you've had, you've had a course of orthodontic treatment, you've had jaw surgery, you know, you've had speech surgery, all of that stuff is really, really important. And I think it's really important to tell them where you were treated and who treated you so they can always liaise with that person and get any information that may be relevant to your care. I'm pleased to say, Stav, you're young and you've probably had really good care because it's been in the, the last few years, but historically we weren't as good as we possibly are now and things were done very differently as some of your um, older adult cleft patients will have will have shared with you that actually yeah. treatment was very very different you know I treat 70 80 90 year olds with clefts now and how we treat patients now and how they were treated um, then is very very different so remember it's all about dignity and respect and treating yeah. people and understanding their phobias and as as a cleft team you're lucky because we're very sensitive to all the you know, stages and how involved the treatment, you know, it's a 20 year journey, isn't it really? Or longer sometimes. And when people look in newspapers, they think it's like one operation and you're cured. And it's so isn't it? It's, it's yeah. a long journey and you get to know people really well. So yeah. um, I think it is really important to educate the dentists and they love it. They, they love to see things that are different as well. So, um, you know, do tell them that what treatment you've had and that you've had a cleft as yeah. well. Exactly. Perfect. And on to our next question. Uh, if I have had restorative work as a child, but my teeth need further work, can I gain this help via pro bono work? Or if I need a new retainer made, for example, where can I get this done as an adult? So um, if you've had restorative dental work done as a child and it needs redoing, again, I would get a second opinion via your your local centre or a specialist cleft centre if you've moved because um, it doesn't cost you anything you can say that I was treated in you know Birmingham or Manchester I had this 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 and done this is now failing could I see your specialist person and get referred by your dentist and then they will look at you and as I say if the treatment's done within the hospital service um, it, you won't be charged for it at the current time and that's how it should be at the moment because cleft is centrally funded if, however, you need a re new retainer after after orthodontics, you know those clear retainers that you sometimes yes. have to wear? I actually we'll do need one. <laughs> yeah, so we call those Essex retainers. And um, you should be able to get that done by your local dentist. So some cleft okay. centres are more strict than others. It just depends how much um, capacity they've got for, mm -hmm. for doing those sorts of things. So you but can just ask and they will do them for you? You can, you can ask, they may say no, but there's no harm in asking, but your dentist yeah. should be able to do that. And this is where the area becomes a bit gray because nobody will keep you on for treatment ever, forever because yeah. you'd never take the new patients on. Does that of make course. sense? Yeah, of course. So, and I think the other important thing that, to remember is that in the past we used to dr drill teeth quite a lot and make long long span bridges yeah. once you start drilling teeth and you need a new bridge you get less and less of your own tooth and that's how you end up losing tooth teeth and that's how you need restorative dentistry so we're much much more conservative these days in how we um, manage missing teeth and we work because we work as a team with the orthodontists as well we're much better at reducing the number of spaces and reducing the number of bridges. So all of that's really, really important. 
Yeah, well, that's great. Well, thank you for asking, answering one of our questions. Um, we do have a couple of questions in the chat. So I will ask you uh, the question that I have here, which is, at what age should implants be done with a child who has a bilateral cleft lip and palate, if ever? Yeah, so that's that's a good good question. So you can't really or you shouldn't do implants while the child is still growing. And usually 18 years of age is the earliest. Now, if you've got a bilateral cleft lip and palate, as I said earlier, sometimes um, you have not enough bone where you'd want to put the implants. And in my experience, um, we tend to use um, adhesive or resin bonded bridges. So they look just as good as implants, but they don't drill the teeth in any way. There's no surgery. And those bridges last without damaging the teeth for about 15 years plus. So the median survival is 15 years. So they might last 30 years. Implants, on the other hand, are much, much more sensitive and they may not last as long. So if you look at implants, they involve, for a start, they'd involve a new bone graft. So you'd need a new bone graft or, um, for your child when they're mm -hmm. 18, 19. You'd then need more surgery to put the implant in. And it's a much, much more longer and complicated procedure. And I mean, I've been at the John Radcliffe Spires Cleft for 18 years now, and I've seen people and really by the time they're 18, um, Stav, you'll probably agree, you've had enough of going to have treatment in a hospital and you want to get on with your life and yeah. mm -hmm. live your life. So you want something, a bridge, for example, without any drilling of the teeth, not the old fashioned bridges, can be done in two visits really. And they can last 15, 20 years. So much, much more conservative and really a much better option for um, most patients with bilateral cleft or even unilateral cleft. Yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, I'm, I would probably ask you this question for a future uh, reference for myself, really. But, you know, if, let's say, in 20 years time, after, you know, many different circumstances, uh, you know, things change in life, if I have more of an issue with my teeth and I, I haven't got a cleft team anymore, I guess I would go back to my GP, try and get myself referred back into the cleft care system. Is that correct? That's right. So go ideally go back to your dentist okay. and say, for example, if you live in London, you'll be able to find who the specialist there is. If you live in Birmingham, uh, if you live in Manchester, go onto the Clapper website or okay. get in touch with Clapper. They will tell you that this is your local cleft centre, mm -hmm. um, but you have a choice to go anywhere. So, you know, if you wanted to come to Oxford, you can be referred. But realistically, um, it's the travel. So you probably are best better off going to your local team. Um, and, and I think that's that's really the advice I would give you. Okay. The right. other thing I will talk about is because there was a couple of questions that I haven't really mentioned and someone was talking about a tooth that's come between an incisor and a molar tooth. Yeah. Um, and sometimes that happens because you can have teeth buried underneath the gum. Uh, and patients with cleft sometimes have extra um, teeth, sometimes they have missing teeth. But if you're not sure what's going on, and your dentist isn't sure what's going on, get referred into the team, get, let us have a look and we will probably know what's going on and make the right sort of decision. So don't suffer in silence, um, get in touch with us. The other thing is somebody else said that um, they had a bilateral um, cleft lip and palate and they'd let their teeth go and they were too embarrassed now to come and have treatment. Don't be, okay? We see everything um, that you can imagine. Uh, we've treated so many cleft patients over so many years that nothing will surprise us. And if you haven't, you know, I've got patients that haven't brushed their teeth for 20 years and they'll come in and see us and we'll still be able to treat them. Yeah. So um, don't be embarrassed. Um, we won't judge you. We've seen all this sort of stuff before and we will find a way forwards for you. And it's the right place to come and see. So it's, you know, come with a friend, come with a member of the family. Um, even, even if you come on your own, don't worry, everybody around you will be qualified, they'll know what to do, and I'll have seen it before, and it's better to treat it early, so don't suffer in silence, yeah? Because as you know, Stav, it's all about how you smile and your self-confidence, and you know, yeah. you know yeah. your teeth feel clean and nice and fresh, and they're working, and 
you've got no leakage through your nose, you feel better, don't you? You do, yeah, you do. Um, I think it took me a long time to accept my smile, actually. So, uh, particularly probably from when I was 21, which yeah. is about nearly eight years ago now. But you know, I, I really it took me a long time to get there. So, really, I can't I can't thank the dentistry in in the collapse care system enough. But, um, very lucky. I'm privileged to be in this country where you can get it uh, on the NHS. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when you've got a lovely smile, so it's really important to be, you know, promote that and keep smiling. But, you know, we can make such a difference to how you feel about yourself, how, how you function, how you look, how you, um, you know, feel about yourself and the confidence if you've got, you know, if you can speak better and all those sorts of things. There's, there's lots of things we can do. So don't feel like you've missed the boat. The other thing we do quite commonly for patients um, with cleft lip and palate and general patients is nowadays we use a lot more um, composite bonding or <laughs> you know, we reshape the teeth and we, there's no drilling, no injections. Um, yeah. No, I have that. I have yeah. these two here. They were yeah. all done with just a gel. Yeah. And yeah. it really is completely painless, isn't it, Stav? And Absolutely. And yeah. no pain at all. Nothing. Pain Just a few odd smells, but yeah. we, yeah. Can, we can handle that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and all we do is we shine a light and we set it and we can shape it and we can choose the colour and it can really make a difference. So whereas before you used to have injections and crowns and this yeah. and that, we don't do that all the time anymore, you know, so there's a lot, lot of things that would have changed. So if you have had treatment years ago and you're not sure, um, come in and talk to people. Um, implants, as I say, are not always possible when you've lost a lot of bone or you haven't got enough bone. And, you know, there's, there's lots of stages before that, but that's not to say, you know, the door is always open and it's never too late. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for everything, uh, Sandy. You have been very, very helpful today. And um, thank you guys for listening to this live Q&A. Uh, we hope that you found the session useful. And if you would like more of these sessions, please do let Clapper know by emailing adults at clapper.com. And if you would like more information on this topic, or even if you have any more questions, really, um, on this particular topic, uh, or on the adult services projects, uh, please visit www.clapper.com forward slash support forward slash adults. Um, thank you, everybody, and good evening. Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye.